We'd like to welcome you to Divine Truth Christian Center where God wants your dreams and visions realized. Realize. This morning, the scripture is going to come from out of Acts chapter 8, verses 5 through 10. Acts chapter 8, verses 5 through 10. Amen. Acts chapter 8. There is children's church this morning. Go ahead and go. It's all right. That just lets the adults know that um, they're still in the house of the Lord and their children are too. Amen. Acts chapter 8, verses 5 through 10 in the New King James Version goes as follows. And this, I believe, will be something that will bless your heart. Because at first I was going to do a different message this morning, but God totally changed it. <laughs> as always, as always. Because I there was something that was on my mind, but then there was something from his heart. And so I pray, pray that you received it this morning. Verse 5 says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them, the Samarians, or Samaritans, if you will. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, one of the apostles, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, amen, crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed. And many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But, someone say but. Never trust a big but and a smile. <sighs> but there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Man, oh man, the title of this morning's message is, Ain't Nothing Like the Real Thing. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing like the, you know you heard it too. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Boop, 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 boop. Ain't nothing like the real thing. They don't move me, they don't group me. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Now soon after, people of God, the descent of the Holy Spirit, and we've been spending our time in the book of Acts because I believe it is a timely message for our congregation in this city as a whole. The descent of the Holy Spirit has just passed. Last uh, week, according to the Jewish calendar, was the time of Pentecost, which 50 days prior to that was the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who was died and was buried and rose again on the third day and sits at the right hand of the Father and makes intercession for us. So 50 days after that particular point in time, the Holy Spirit fell. 43 days prior to that, the Spirit of God went into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And then before he left and ascended from the Mount of Olives and before while he was talking to the apostles, he, uh, the angel said, why do you stand here gazing for the same way that I left here, I'm coming back again. And so seven days or the 43 days after that or the seven days after that 43rd day was the 50th day the time of Pentecost, where Jesus fulfilled his promise by sending the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who descended down upon the people inside of the upper room. They were all of one spirit and all of one accord. They spoke in a heavenly language. We talked last week about the heavenly language was God's redeeming or redemption from the Tower of Babel, where pride confounded everybody's language. And now we're in the time of the Holy Spirit where we are unified in God's native tongue, in the Spirit. So not soon after all of that actually happened, we also see that the church grew exponentially. Hebrews 10 verse 25 says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. In other words, this is the birth of the church because the purpose of you, not the building, purpose, uh, purpose of you uh, uh, coming together as the church is to encourage one another or to be the voice to the individual when the preacher's voice is not working. Okay, okay, because you preach to each other when you're in the congregation, when you're out in the lobby, or you know the best messages are after the preacher finishes. 
because you're talking to one another because while you may be uncomfortable speaking to me because you know I look through your soul, the person sitting next to you may be going through the same thing, but they may have grabbed a hold to what was said this morning, and now you're preaching to them what thus saith the Lord. So as a result of all this, the church grew exponentially. The, the, the church, the God added daily such that would be saved. And, and, and at this moment in time, in, in, in the antiquities of the gospel, the people were also being saved, delivered, and set free from sin, from demonic oppression, and physical maladies or sickness, if you will. See, people get kind of uh, uh, kind of a little bit weird when they, when you start talking about demons and 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 principalities and spirits and 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 and, and uh, spiritual wickedness and high places. But I assure you that they are really real. Uh, one of our members posted inside of a forum about this game called Charlie Charlie, which is a reincarnation of Candyman Candyman, which is a reincarnation of Bloody Mary, which is a reincarnation of different types of seances that they used to do back in the day, and they're watching this particular stick move like a Ouija board and they're asking this demonic spirit that's supposed to be from Mexico but I didn't know that they were in Mexico but anyway and then they watched it move all over the place and they were screams and, and scars and I said this is a repeat demons didn't just appear on the internet and the funny thing about it was is that uh, one, one, of our, one of the uh, individuals who was uh, d doing a commentary, and I'm sure the individual was being not honest, was basically saying, well, you know, we, we're more mature than that. We're more, we know more than that. That, that, there's, that, that. that doesn't really make sense. We, we're smarter than that. But, but I want to pull that person from out of epistemological type of thinking where it's only knowledge base, and I want you to understand that, hey, 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 it's not only to know of things of God, but also know of the adversary for Satan goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and so I basically say look look sir look ma'am uh you need to understand that 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 spirits are old they're very old they're, they're powers and principalities and it's not only God because that's 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 the old Jewish mindset where you believe that all good and evil comes from the same thing but it's not only God, which God is good all the time, but there's also an evil one, an adversary. And people don't just do things just because of their mindset. They do things because there's also something on their shoulder, like the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other shoulder, both of them giving messages to the one in the middle. And whatever you heed to is what you're feeding the most. That's the truth of the matter. And so that same type of thing that's going on in this earth realm together, I said, you know what, it's so funny how the devil slip stuff in there. Amen. First you see, I'm preaching, I'm going to go ahead and go there. First you see Miss Doubtfire several years ago. <laughs> and it's hilarious. And then you see Wesley Snipes are dressing up differently, and then that's hilarious, and then that was a funny. And then you see RuPaul's Drag Race, and then that's funny, and that's hilarious. And, and then there's Modern Family, and then that's nice, and that's hilarious. And then all of a sudden, the laws begin to change for only 1.2% of the population. And it's not them. It's all the Christian sympathizers. You sympathize with what is going on, so therefore it seems like everybody's into it. And so now we have this particular game popping up, which is an element of sorcery. And what was more sinister is, is that it's supposed to be innocent because the kids are playing. But one of the things that the Holy Spirit dropped into me right at that moment in time, I was like, you know what? These are young kids playing this game. That means that there's a large percentage of, percentage of them that are virgins. And whenever virgins call on demonic spirits, that means that there's a sacrifice getting ready to take place. Not a godly one, but an evil one. Keep your eyes open to what's going on. Demonic oppression. They opened up a gate. A small gate. A small opening. That's all you need. Miss Doubtfire was a gate to desensitize the people to sinfulness in the world. Remember, everybody in here was introduced something to something that was ungodly by a friend. Your enemy didn't shove weed down your, weed down your throat. 
It wasn't a girl that didn't like you that gave you the, or a man didn't like you that just gave you, you, you know, it wasn't any of those. It was a, under a nice, a pleasant situation. But then when you got into it, you was like, oh, my God, what is this? A demonic oppression. And that's what Philip was preaching against, and he began to cast those things out. That's what preaching is for. It's to cast some things out for you to identify what exactly is going on with you. So the ministry was having impact. There was joy in the city. Lives were being changed, and you could see the tangible work of God spreading like wildfire. But, but with every movement or momentous occasion for God, there is also mushrooming opposition uh, against the plan of God. Anytime you see God moving forward, the enemy is also trying to stop you at the same time. Philip is there. Simon is there. They, the people called them both great men of God. So the people couldn't tell the fake preachers from the real one. And you wonder why they won't leave their church. Oh, gosh. For every supernatural move of the spirit, there is a false move by the evil one. For every grain of wheat, there is a weed and, and uh, with thorns. For, for every blade of grass, there are also weeds that are just as green. And, and, and to the untrained eye, it all looks the same, but it is not. Uh, I'm trying to help you this morning. There's, there's nothing like the real thing. 1 John uh, 4, verses 1 through 6 says this. This, is, this, is, this, is, this, this sums it up in, in, in its entirety. Beloved. Don't or do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world, the real church in the wild. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and, that, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Let me pause right there. Antichrist spirit. What is opposed to God is an Antichrist spirit. Opposed to his ways is an Antichrist spirit. Not an individual, not a son of perdition. Oh, let me go ahead and touch on it. Do you understand and realize with this spirit that's going on with homosexuality that's in the earth realm, do you realize that the scripture says that the Antichrist will be a person that does not have any regard for women? Go ahead and look it up. Now, many theologians uh, surmise that this person is asexual. In other words, they, they're, they're, they're not going to get married, and, and they're not interested in any women. I don't know any man that's not interested in a woman. Anti-Christ. Opposite. Same. Okay. You are of God, little children. Little children in this particular uh, uh, description does not mean five and six and three years old. What it means is a child of God. A child of God can be 40 or 50 or 70 years old because when you're compared to an eternal being, you're still a child. Amen. That'll help you for those Old Testament people that believe that, that uh, 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 God sent out a bear to t in order to tear up the children on the side of the road. Those were adults. They were just called children because of their place as opposed to God. I want to help you with that. So as you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is greater, who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. This right here teaches you how to discern 
a person that is of God versus one who's not of God. I did not say a person who is obedient from one who's disobedient because all of us have been disobedient at one point in time, but we still have God's spirit. I hope you know the difference. A person who, uh, 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 watch this, if Lil Wayne and and, and them, can I say in them, if Lil Wayne and them got more pull to the ear than gospel and, and they heed those words, then that person may not be of God because they see that as more credible than what God is saying. But they're still in the same situation, sitting on the front porch, not doing anything with their lives. But they still give credence to that. Likewise, you can have a person that's going through and they got the spirit of God because they say, I hear you, preacher. I understand. I'm trying. I'm just going through right now. We know the spirit of truth between the spirit of error. Furthermore, Jesus said that there will be many false Christs and many false teachers. So my question to each one of you, and I've asked this before, so I'll ask it again, even to those that may be watching online at a later date. My question to you is that if there are so many, as Jesus said, and you know that he's always right because he's God, how come you don't know any? If there are so many false teachers and false preachers, how come you don't know any? Further, why do people who want more of God stay where God is not? And how do leaders of these places keep the people in bondage in a place where God said there should be freedom and liberty? This is the great question. As I was driving uh, yesterday, I passed through a particular street that had a church on every corner. Every corner. It's, 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 it's crazy because, because uh, on the way back from um, Tampa yesterday, I forgot what the name of the road was, but, but when we first got the intersection, I saw this one particular church. And then right next door, I saw another church. And then two doors down, I saw another church. Then I saw a liquor store. Then another church. And then another church. And then another church. And then on the opposite side, another church. And another church. And another church. I was like, if all y'all closed down and got together, y'all would be a great church. Acts chapter 8 and 9, I'm going to talk more about that later. Acts chapter 8, verse 9 through 10 says, But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people with his holy oil and his water and his napkin screaming in the middle of the night. God! Okay, I know some of y'all didn't see that. But there was a certain man named called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. He claimed he was great. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. They didn't say he has the great power. They said that he is the great power of God. There ain't nothing like the real thing. See, prior to this first people of God, Saul was assaulting the church. Saul, prior to his conversion, was terrorizing the church. And while Philip was being real with the people, there were others that were still bound by an existing source. One of sorcery and deception. Where there is rebellion, there is witchcraft. Or people are up under control. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes the warlock is the preacher. It it looked like a move of God. That's right. Uh, He spoke like the people of God and was kind and giving like the people of God, but it wasn't God. What do you do when you have a controlling warlock that gives you money for your rent? Are you going anywhere? No. They give you a ride. Come on. Meet me in paradise. I got two tickets to paradise. Pack your bags. We'll, we'll, we'll leave. The, two, and, and they're nice and friendly and, and clean cut. But then behind closed doors, they're like ravenous wolves. And the people in the congregation can't tell the difference. Oh, that's just how he is. He's in one of his moods today. Even the first lady, most of the time, you can look at the first lady and you can see exactly what's going on in the preacher's house by looking at her. And now the first lady is like, or better yet, now she's practiced being fake. 
everything is all right. It's all right. It's all right. I got some makeup on the, the, the grab marks around the neck. Everything's all right. And the rumors are going on in the congregation. And because some of the ladies in the congregation have hands around their necks, they ain't moving either. Because whatever is emitting from up here permeates out there. So here's Simon that has sorcery and all the people are standing up and rejoicing and saying, this man is the great power of God. Notice how they, as I was telling the people, the leaders this morning, how they were lifting him up and putting him on a pedestal that he did not deserve. I am not the power of God. God is the power of God. I am just his servant. Acts chapter 8, verse 11 through 12, I'm, I'm trying to help you because it's, sometimes folk won't leave their church because they're under control. And they're being oppressed and, and there's a puppet master that's at the very front and they're not going to get loose unless those strings are cut by the power of God. Verse 11 says, and then they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. They blew upon the people and the crowd, and they all fell backwards inside of the entire place. Wow, that looks like dominoes. But I told you before that biblically, any time somebody fell backwards, it was always in judgment. So that's why I don't push you back. If you fall back, then maybe that's God telling you that you need to get right. But most of the time when you submit to God, you submit and you bow before him. Nowhere in Scripture do you see any person laying back worshiping God. Nowhere. I just wanted to help you. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when the, they believed Philip as he preached the same things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. So some things were happening. Both preachers were in the same city. But they had different agendas. If you get healed by the devil and you get healed by God, aren't both of y'all happy? As long as the healing happens, then what does it matter? I could care less. If, whether, if, if, if Chauncey pay the rent versus my husband, then as long as the bills get paid, what does it matter? It's all about the bottom line. But there's always a cost to certain things. Uh, see, see, people of God, weeds, when they grow, they always grow thick in the center and then they spread. But when grass grows, grass does not have a rootful type of center. It grows because of its connections instead. So the people of God uh, 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 grow because of their connections. But when it comes to selfish, self-centered people, their roots grow firm and then they spread their influence, controlling everyone around them instead. That's why wheats and tares look so similar to each other. Because you can't tell on the surface. The only way that you could tell a wheat from a tear is its roots. You will see wheat grow differently than grass. Some of y'all ain't been out in the yard a long time. <laughs> that might be a sad little indictment because if you haven't been out into God's vineyard, then you don't know the difference between the two. Everybody's the same. But you will see the weeds and, 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 and grow differently than grass. And, and watch this. Yes, they both need seeds, sunlight and soil like grass. And like grass, weeds grow wide and far, but its strength is based in its thick center. And when you pull up its center for a weed, watch this, the rest of it dies. Have you ever pulled up a weed? Whenever you pull up a weed, if, if you got any type of skills, you don't pull the weeds from the top. Or else you're going to have a whole bunch of splinter and your skin is going to start peeling from the poison that's going to come from the weeds. The way that you pull the weed up is that you dig down to the bottom and then you get up under all the thorns and then you got to uproot that thing. But grass, it's hard to uproot grass because no matter where you go, wherever you try to pull up, it always grows back together. And fills in the spots. I hope you see the revelation there. 
So uh, 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 a man or a woman of God that's self-centered, when they get uprooted or when they leave, everything around it dies. But a man or woman of God that is connected with the people of God, that person could die in the pulpit and the church will still go forward because it wasn't centered around a personality. It was centered around principle. (laughs) <laughs> okay, that, I'm just trying to let you know uh, how this thing is supposed to go. So, so, so in contrast, we, we also know that grass, who also can grow far and wide, but its strength is based on networks or connections. You can never find the starting point of grass. Where? Go, go outside and go into your nice plush lawn that's always watered. And see if you could find out where was the starting point. You can't tell. But if you got weeds, you can always st- t- tell the starting point of a weed because it's always in the center. But God says, let them grow together. And at the end of time, I'm going to separate the wheat from the chaff or the wheat from the tares because he's going to uproot and pull up some things and separate them. Get out into the yard today and you'll see. If if you ever go out into the yard and you start pulling up weeds in the midst of your grass, you can see how God will send his angels to separate some people's spirits from others. Amen. You thought you were just going outside and just picking up grass. But God was trying to teach you a revelation about how people are and how he has to pull up some things and how you can cast some demons out. You got to pull it out by the root. You don't pull it out by, let me help you. The top of the weeds symbolize symptoms, the result of what is the actions or the, what is the result of the roots. So if you try to pull a weed from the top because they're crying or they're going through some things, and you say, well, let me just at least help you stop crying, that's not taking care of anything. Because you'll get hurt trying to help people with their symptoms. <laughs> you'll get hurt trying to help somebody get right but you're approaching it wrong. You got to go down deep. That's what Philip was doing. He was able to perform miracles because he wasn't preaching to their symptoms. He was preaching to their most felt needs, the deep part of man to their spirit. Oh, this is the reason why I act the way that I do. It's not because of music. It's because of what happened many years ago. can never find grass or a grassy place's starting point because its strength is in something larger than itself. See, a weed strength is in its roots, but grass strength is not in its roots. It's in other grass. Now you understand the difference between the world and the church. The world is self-centered, but grass or, or the people of God are God-centered and something bigger than themselves. Verse 13 says that Simon himself, watch this now, this is crazy. (laughs) So the fake preacher, Simon right here, also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. They're on the same flyer. The man that was controlling everybody is now on the same flyer with the man of God, walking with him, and he was baptized with him. That means he wasn't saved. But he was preaching for a long time. How many unsaved preachers do you know? See, let me go ahead and get you in on a the, on the, on the, on the little bit of game right here, a peep game, if you will. When I was, from your vantage point, I thought that all, mostly all preachers were good unless they did something really, 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 really bad, like kill somebody. But for the most part, everybody's good because you really couldn't tell one thing from another. They read from the Bible, sat down, took up an offer, and that's it. You see them later. But then when I became a preacher, when God called me a preacher, did you know that it looks different from my vantage point? You can't tell, but I can tell what my peers are like. And I want to tell some folks so bad that you know that particular church on the east side, west side, north side, or south side? That preacher is crooked. It's all get out. But because I'm not God, I can't pass judgment upon that man. 
So I just pray and I just preach to the people that God has given me. But in my mind, I'm like, my God, who can go there? That's why it's so important for you to know the word of God for yourself in its proper context. Because Philip had the spirit of God because there was an Ethiopian eunuch that was on his way to worship at the temple. And he was trying to figure out the word of God by himself. And Philip asked the man, do you know what you're reading? And the Ethiopian eunuch was like, how should I, can I know unless some person guide me? So everybody needs guidance. So it it flips the coin on both sides. Yes, there are some crooked preachers, but that does not mean that you should isolate yourself with your Bible because you could end up with some bad guidance. And you'll turn into a we, self-centered. It's all about me and not my connections. Amen. And Simon himself, who also believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Phil. That's crazy. And was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. He wasn't committing any miracles, but he was like, I, I had my little Ouija board in the corner, and I made this happen, but you're not using none of that. That's strange. Let me go ahead and be baptized. Let me go ahead and have a form of godliness and hook up with you. This is a warning, people of God. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful who tries to hook up with you because you have God's spirit. Mm-hmm. This is ladies and gentlemen. Be careful of who endorses your dysfunction. Who endorses your craziness. Whoever endorses your craziness, your dysfunction, or, or antichrist behavior is not your friend. They are not for you. They're trying to take you down from the inside. So be careful who tries to hook up with you. Remember this, the real attracts the fake. Authenticity is attractive to falseness. That's why Jesus will always ran into the Pharisees. <laughs> Every time you look throughout the scripture, it was Jesus and then there go the Pharisees. Here they come. They got always got something to say. <laughs> They're always questioning. That, have you ever had somebody that always had a whole bunch of questions but no solution? I'm questioning everything. That's how you want to try to twist up somebody because you have a whole bunch of questions but then no answers. Watch this. Before you get the real deal, the devil always, always sends a counterfeit in first in hopes that you can't tell the difference. Your real husband is waiting in the wings, but you got some crazy knucklehead that you're trying to get right. And because they came to church two times, that gave you hope. But then you found out that being religious is not going to pay the bills. It's, 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 not, it's not worth anything, and they're still the same. And you spend and you waste your time and years go by and by and by. And then your husband that God wants to give you ends up being married. And you see the ring on Facebook on another woman's hand where it should be yours. He was too born in high school. She didn't, I didn't know, I couldn't tell if she had a body doc because she never wore those type of clothes. I couldn't tell the difference. Trust me when I tell you that I met a lot of ungodly women before I got to this one. And I can tell you I wish I would have had this one before I went through the others. I could have saved like six years of my life. Amen. Is this thing on? Hello, 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 do let the do this. Is this thing on? It the, the same thing is for right now. It applies right now. It applies right now. So before you get the real deal, the devil always sends a counterfeit uh, first in hopes that you can't tell the difference. Now, this doesn't happen only in relationships. This also happens when you're trying to build a ministry. I don't forget stuff, y'all. I remember stuff. God sent a whole bunch of fake counterfeit preachers here to try to hook up with me to try to have a church within a church. They wanted to have this section over there. Didn't want to connect with me, but let me rent out your building so I could possibly preach loud enough to see if I could get some of your people to come over with me. And maybe you'll see the revelation, Pastor Andre, that you should be up under me instead of me being up under you. 
Well, I'm just letting you know. You thought the politics in Washington, D.C. was crazy. It's crazy with other preachers. All right, I just wanted to share that with you. So, so, so both believe him, Philip, and Simon both believe in the works, but not the one who is the source of the works. Simon believed in the works that Philip was doing, but not in the source of, of the power that Philip had. Do you know that some people will only come to church because they are blessed? But they don't remember the one who gave the blessing? So now, I'm, I'm going to get ahead of myself. Let me keep on moving. With Simon, he did his works, but they were false. Philip, he did his works, but they were in God. Simon was self-centered, but Philip was Christ-centered. So, in essence, people of God, God is telling us this morning that we need to go outside of the box of deception and get those squares out of your circle. But what ends up happening is, is that we want to get the circles out of our square. In other words, we want to get the good people out and away from us and attract the bad ones. When you have a circle of influence, it makes you uncomfortable. It challenges you. It, it, it does some things to you when you have somebody telling you, and they're a preacher too, that, hey, preacher, and I'm another preacher, you know you need to get right with your wife. Could you imagine that conversation? These are the conversations that I have. I have preachers calling me for accountability. I'm like, oh, I'm just the Pastor Martin on, on the, on, in Castleberry. <laughs> So the conversations between each other are strange. Did you know that, let me help you, birds of a feather flock together? And when you all go to specific events around Orlando, or you see specific flyers, a lot of times when you see the same group of people on the same flyer, if you know the dirt on one, they all have the same dirt. And the crazy thing is, the number of people that are attracted to that. And what I want to do is I want to post right up under that. I was like, these preachers are not right. I have so many enemies in Orlando, man. But I have some people that are in the congregation be like, I wanted to tell them that, but, but my sister and my brother go here. I can't go nowhere. Tell them, preacher, tell them. But they won't leave. Acts chapter 8, verse 14 through 17. Is this all right? Because what I'm trying to tell you is I'm trying to help you with your spirit of discernment because you can't think that all preachers and all people who go to church are the same. There is a difference between the two. There are unsaved preachers, I call them warlocks, that are up in the front of congregations and they got more money than everybody. But just because you got more money and more people doesn't mean that people are being saved. Just because you have few people doesn't mean that everybody's authentic because that's the reason why in Tampa I saw a church on, I saw like 20 churches within a one-mile block. 20. Because they had the spirit of competition versus cohesion. Only McDonald's and Burger King would be in one plaza right next to each other. Burger King and McDonald's got two different things going on, two different menus, two different recipes, two different management styles, two different CEOs, but their main aim is profit. So the main reason why you see church after church after church after church is because one of those preachers in that particular place figured that they got a better revelation than the one next door to them, and I can't get with them because we're the real ones over here. If you're a really real one, you're going to go out where there's nobody at. <laughs> Uncharted territory. It's so crazy to me how franchise people understand this. If you're having a franchise, help me, Holy Ghost. If you have a franchise, you don't have one Chick-fil-A sitting right next to another Chick-fil-A. Because they are both from the same source. And they will be contradicting from they will actually be hurting each other because they're supposed to be feeding into the same source. And the people will be like, why are y'all next to each other? 
Because when I see this as a person that has never eaten here before, I'm going to be like, there must be something wrong with one of y'all. I didn't grow up in church. I'm just letting you know what my perspective is when I see a whole bunch of church string together like, like that. What's wrong with one of y'all? Why, why, why this church has a lot, uh, five people in there and, th- and this church got 20 people in there? And they both have visited e- both places. Because there's division. And when there's division, there is no power. And the community looks the same. Now get this, people of God. Watch this. Acts 14, verse 17 says this. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem, taking care of their house, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. Time for some backup. Well, it's going to get good in just a minute. Verse 15 says, who, when they had come down to town, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. That denotes that the Holy Spirit wasn't there while Philip was there. There was another spirit that was there, and it was right close to Philip. Simon was with him the entire time, but he had dark magic. And they called him a great man of God. Ain't that crazy? It's it's just, but there's nothing new under the sun. So that's why you can have preachers that be on the same flyer. But one of them could be real uh, because he snuck snuck through the screening process. But then after he speaks a loud voice and says what he has to say, you'll never see that preacher come back to that same conference group again because he messed up the apple cart. I'm just letting you know what's on the other side. Verse 15, repeating, who then had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. You you heard that? Philip is one of the apostles. He's baptizing people. He's taking care of people. Let me keep on going. For as yet uh, the Holy Spirit, which means he, in verse 16, had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and received the Holy Spirit. So that means to tell me that Philip was preaching and teaching and baptizing people, but none of them were filled with the Spirit. They were saved only. How many churches do you know of where the people are saved only, but nothing more? No power, a powerless church. Did you notice that the people under Philip's ministry were being saved, but not filled with the spirit? He was being opposed by a demonic spirit because he did see Jesus. He was doing miracles. But people stopped being filled when he hooked up with Simon. Or rather, Simon hooked up with him. See, Philip was just going on about his business, but then there was somebody in the midst that was also a great man of God, according to what the people said. But little did Philip know that was a principality. He had his own set of principles. He got baptized. By the same man. But yet nobody was being filled with the spirit. But then God's word, like grass, reached the ears of Peter and John. And they heard where Philip was going. And when the boys came, I think I'm going to need it back up. (laughs) I think I'm going to need it back. When the boys came, then they started laying hands. They didn't preach no more. They start using, they start going to work. They start laying hands. They started imparting the spirit into individuals. And then the people were filled. Oh, then they were filled. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. But then those guys, when they got with Philip, they laid hands on him and they received the Holy Spirit. See, Philip was in a tough situation because when you start getting a whole bunch of people saved and set free and things like that, the man who's not doing what what they're supposed to do will all of a sudden show up at your church. We had a couple of spies come through here. Y'all didn't even know it. (sighs) I ain't going to even get into that. But we've had some spies. The preacher don't come themselves. They send out scouts. They'll put a flyer in our... (laughs) 
And I see y'all going to go right out there and look at that flyer. I don't care if you do because you need to know. I left it right out there for this, specifically this example. <laughs> so they sent out a spy to see what we got going on at Club Fire so they could try to reproduce the same thing without God's spirit. I could get a godly husband, too, without God. I could get a job that I've always prayed for without God. See, the thing that I learned about this is that Philip needed help like Gabriel needed Michael. It was a principality. Let me help you. When Daniel received the dream, from the angel of the Lord about what was going to happen during the book of Revelation, the, the three and a half years of, of, of tribulation and another three and a half years of tribulation during the end times of which no Christian should be around or there. This is when the Jewish people will finally realize that Jesus is God. And when he had this vision of what was going to happen in the future, he became depressed for three weeks. In the middle of that particular depression, right before he prayed, now he prayed and nothing didn't happen, so he became depressed. But watch this. At the end of that particular three weeks, Gabriel shows up saying, hey, I had a little bit of trouble <laughs> trying to get to you because, you know, God, he heard your prayer, but I was withstood by the prince of Persia. The prince of Persia is emblematic or, or symbolic of Satan himself or a demonic principality that was over the region. Persia in that time, day's time is called Iraq right now. And that's where ISIS has a hold of a lot of stuff. And that's where a whole bunch of wars have been running for the last 14 years. So that same demonic principality was withstanding Gabriel. Because Gabriel was trying to deliver to that same man, Daniel, the word of the Lord saying, I got a plan. So people of God, don't stop praying because it doesn't happen. Sometimes your prayers are being withstood by the evil one. And if he can make you tap out before it comes to you, then you've already lost. God, uh, God knows that the enemy is trying to make us tap out because he put us here and now the, the people are kind of sometimey. Well, you know, it's the summertime. But people that ain't got no money are everywhere. <laughs> and I got to still preach in love anyway. So God wants us to, God wants us to tap out and say, ain't nobody going to come. Ain't nobody going to come. Ain't never going to come. They said that when we were in our first building, in our second building, in our third one. And they're saying it right now. And you know stuff is happening because we got spies coming here. We've had spies all along, y'all. So he needed Peter and John to help him with that Simon problem. Because he looked like God, act like God. The people said he was God, of God, but he wasn't of God. He had a form of godliness. And you can imagine, the people never spoke out against Simon during this entire exchange. They were silent the entire time. They just wanted to be helped. That's like me being crooked, and then y'all hoping that Sister Pam going to say something in the spirit. That's going to make me change. That ain't going to happen. Because that's not typically how things go. So likewise, the person that you're trying to invite to church because you know that the pre cre preacher is crooked, but they stay there year after year after year, it's the same situation because that's not how God designed it. He designed for the shepherd to speak to the other shepherd. So I guess I'm going to get in trouble very soon. <laughs> it's all right, Lady Mom. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. So Philip needed help. Just like Gabriel needed Michael. Michael don't talk. Michael is a warring angel. Michael just fights a lot. So you had one that was given a message in Gabriel and the other one who was fighting. Did you know that Philip's name means man of war? But he needed Peter and John with him. And so when Peter and John came together, they didn't say nothing. Because everything needed to be preached. But they started laying hands and they started giving the people the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, now you could tell real from fake. Have you ever taken a coin and there's gold in your eye 
and you bite it to try to, like the cartoons, you try to bite it to see if it's real about hurt yourself. I did that one time, and it was still fake, but I just hurt my teeth. <laughs> but God wants us to be able to tell, just like this photo right here, you have to examine things closely. Because the way that the deception is today, you can't tell a good preacher from a not so good preacher. Because we don't understand sound doctrine. Ecclesiastes gives us the need for this. We also see how when they got together, it was the three of them together. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So things started to happen. So God never called you to be isolated with your Bible by your bedside, never coming to church. He never called you to do that. Because your heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And as long as you're human, you're going to, most of the time, not read it at all. You watch your TV show a couple of times, and then you don't know what in the world that person's doctrine is. It goes into your spirit. You open up a gate because you're just trying to stay connected, and all of a sudden you fall off the Richter scale. But Ecclesiastes says differently. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 through 12 says, two are better than one. They came down to help them. I do have preachers in the city that have come to help me. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Did you know the main other good reason why it's good for you to be involved with your church family is when you fall on hard times? You know how hard it is to find help when no one's there? But then, when you need help, whether it's moving or, or certain types of events or something like that, then your church family comes there because they love you. Because that's what you're supposed to do. We're a family. So two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone and he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? The one may be overpowered by another. Two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Peter Philip and John were the threefold cord that could not be broken. And they took Simon and they cast him out. When there is a move of the Holy Spirit, the Lord will send people with his spirit to manage the movement like Peter and John. And to tear down strongholds. In the last five years of our church, we have had one elder. Purposely, because I know that not many people will preach the way that I preach, even though there are others and they are highly persecuted. That's like me. <sighs> I ain't going to even say that. I'm going to skate past that. But you shouldn't do things alone. We know of one particular individual that has been going through some very, very hard times. They remain nameless. Over the past year, they've been to hell and back again. <sighs> Basically, what's been happening with this person is that they know God, they love him, but they're out there on their own because they bought into this thing that I don't need a covering. So they're out there on their own, and then when they needed family to come and help chip in in order to get something very significant done, nobody showed up. Because the thing about you being out on your own is that you're friends with no one and no one can help you. Amen. I'm just out here doing the work of the Lord by myself. Not touching nobody's lives, though. I don't have nobody I can hook up with because you know everybody's lying. And you isolate yourself because you're supposed to have the spirit of God, but then you say, I don't trust nobody. That doesn't, that's, that's, that's not of God. When you say you don't trust nobody, that means that you got something deep down on the inside of you that needs to be pulled up because your father forgave all. So who's your father? Who's your daddy? Who's the DNA match?
Watch this. I'm almost done. Acts chapter 8, verse 18 through 21. This is a mature message. I hope it's helping you. And when Simon saw through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the preacher was like this. Like, girl, Bible, what is this? Like this. <laughs> and when Simon saw through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. Saying, give me this power also. Now, hold up, wait a minute. He was baptized. He was with Philip the entire time. He saw the mighty miracles, but he was like, I want some of that power. But I thought you were able to do some of the same things the same way. No, they had different power sources. Because any time you do things according to the evil one, there's always a high price to pay. And it's usually not someone else's blood. It's your own. Whenever you have to shed your own blood, the devil is in it. But whenever God is moving, you rely on his blood because Jesus Christ already shed it. And when Simon saw through with the laying on the hands, the, the Holy Spirit was given. He offered them money saying, give me this power also and anyone whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. So give me some money. Oh, let me give you some money and give me this Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, your pun money perish with you. The, the, the message translation said, it, it says, to hell with the, the, your, your money. I don't need your money. I don't need it. You can't buy the Holy Ghost. You can't have him come into this place just because you buy it. Oh, there's people everywhere. And you can hide in the back of the congregation in the midst of everybody else with your undelivered self? No. Peter said to him, your money perish with you. Because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with a conference registration. For $100, you can hear what God has already has in his own Bible. I'm not saying don't go. You could go for administrative things and, you know, just the inner workers, but you don't need to go there and pay for somebody to tell you about what the preacher has been telling you for free for every single week. My bishop, he had to get on us about that. He was like, I know you're going to spend $150 for a person that you'll never be able to shake hands with, but I sit with you every single week telling you this stuff for free. Y'all wonder how we got to this particular place? I, don't, I have never been to a particular conference over there in that part of Orlando. Not since I've been here. And we have our 501c3. We have all of our papers. We have a dynamite website. We have a dynamite facility. We have a dynamite ministry. We are part of a, several different areas and, and, and different things like that. And we have our own building. We have a place where the people want to give us the entire thing. If we had the money, you can't find that at a conference. Because the word of God has everything. But the people are saying, give me some money so I could do what you're doing, preacher. Give me some money. <laughs> give me some money so I could be just like Bishop Watermelon Head. I don't want to suffer like Bishop Watermelon Head, but just give me a quick fix. Because there are some bishops that have suffered. They have gone through some things, and they are where they're supposed to be because they have done it the right way. Let me not let you get a miss of that. No, 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 no. So the reason why you're paying is because they're trying to print all of the stuff. But I'm talking about you who go in there for a wrong reason. Because you want to try to duplicate something without God. You'll never be able to duplicate something without God. Verse 21 says, you neither have part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Preachers shouldn't be talking to other preachers like that. But we do. We don't mince words with each other. Not at all. My wife will tell you that. When I talk with other preachers, I do not mince words. When my 
pastor friend, he calls me and he asks me, Pastor Andre, I just want to keep myself accountable and things of that nature. You know, I, I, I had this particular young person that, you know, he, he's been messing around with people in the congregation. And I said, well, have you kicked him out? Because the Bible says that if a Christian claims to be a Christian and they still act hypocritical, don't even eat with them. But you need a musician on Sunday mornings. Which one are you going to do? The soundtracks? So now y'all know why we had soundtracks for the very first two years of our ministry. Because we had people who were trying to compromise or trying to slip in. So there are people who are in ministry for the recognition it brings, for the titles, and for the accolades. But it's the gospel that takes precedent. In order to set people free from demonic oppression, guilt, shame, and unbelief, there must be power. Holy Ghost power. Real power. I'm not offended when certain people don't come around me because I look through your soul on purpose. I look through and I see your eyes on purpose and I see how you do things. And so you don't want to have a conversation with me because you know I'm going to tell you what God said. There's some people who don't want to be around me because I prophesied to them and it has come true. I told this one particular individual, you do not need to marry that person. But I believe God told me. I was like, how did God tell you that? He didn't tell you that. But I hear God for myself. Some of y'all, sometimes y'all, I just be wanting to cuss in the spirit, but I know I can't because I know God has brought me a long way. But in my mind, I'm like, I just need to put a meme up there. Say it. Ah, anyway. <laughs> and no sooner than six months later, Pastor Martin, I just don't know what went wrong. I'm like, man. I didn't say man. But in something, I said something else in my mind. I was like, you didn't listen. And the person ended up getting a divorce seven months later. The person asked me five times, should I marry them? And I said five times, no. But they were looking for a different answer. And got, watch this. If I was personality driven or just trying to please the person, could you imagine what it would have been like if I would have said, well, you should go ahead and marry them. They can change. And then that particular person, because they are doing it right now, are blasting preachers. Ever since they never came back, they are blasting preachers, but they can't blast me because I told them not to hook up with the crazy person. But if I would have told them to hook up with that person, they would have been like, man, I thought. That preacher, he sounded good. He was preaching against other preachers. He was preaching sound doctrine, but he told me that he heard from God, and, and, and I should hook up with this individual. Now, look, I guess he ain't of God. <laughs> Y'all better listen. I don't have an agenda. I love God. That's it. I'm my flawed and crazy self. So, so, so there are people who are in ministry for the recognition it brings, for the titles and for the accolades, but it's the gospel that takes precedent. It's through power, Holy Ghost power. So you can't buy God's best. Let me help you with that. Leaders, mature saints of God, or my little children or my little babies are, are new to the things of God. In other words, you're new to the things of God because you've been in church all your life, but you're new to the things of God. That's crazy, but it's true because I was in church with my parents, but I'm, I was new to the things of God because I got baptized when I was 14, but I didn't get saved until I was 26. So for my church folk that are just new to the spirit of God, you can't buy God's best. Be very leery when a preacher has too many selfies. I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about us, uses. They got sticks now. I was wondering how in the world that thing tilted with the faces and whatnot. I was like, what is that? And I'm a pretty technical guy, but I'm like, what is that? So they got sticks with themselves together, showing everything. Look at what I got. I wish there was a spiritual stick. 
They showed what their spirits looked like at every place instead. So you can't buy God's best. The ladies now <laughs> want to hook up with a preacher because they could be called first lady. Because they got the nice uh, Tracy Lynn jersey. I'm just going ahead. I might as well just go ahead and go all out there butt naked now. Just go ahead and bust it all up so you could be all right. So you could tell the difference when you go somewhere now. But not knowing that the first lady suffers sometimes even more than the man of God. Because the man of God in the spirit got a gun to his head talking about something. I'm ready to off myself right now. And she's trying to, to keep us on straight and narrow. Help us keep our sanity. My wife saw me when I was getting ready to quit ministry and say, forget it. I want my black and miles and my drink, and I want to say, to hell with everybody. But then she was like, you can't do that. You can't do that. Look how far we've come. You don't have everything you want to. Look how far we've come. She's been able to withstand the mood swings or the spiritual mood swings where I'm okay in here, but then when I get home, I'm depressed and I can't even look at TV. The New York Giants are playing and I'm down with my head down, wondering where are the people. And because she loves me, she goes through it with me. But she can't be weak with me or we both are going down. You sure you want to be a first lady? No, you don't. You're going to have to deny yourself. You're going to have to give up your paycheck several times. If you ain't ready to give up your paycheck, you are not ready to be no first lady. You can't buy God's best. You can't win souls with gimmicks. Can I go ahead and go down? Might as well. I might as well. There are some churches here in this city and other cities where they will buy bunches and bunches of gas. Free things, give away free TVs and all these other different types of things. And they get the people in there for that Sunday or two. But the people aren't saved. So then when the TVs or the iPads don't show up, they leave. And then the preacher is like, I saw this big name preacher do it up there, up north. And look at all those people that came. They got a big giant church not knowing that that person was in ministry for 25 years. And you're in ministry for five. So you try to apply the same type of methodology, going broke, running down your offer, running down the people's money, which should be for other things, but you say that you're helping other people, but you're really not. You're doing it out of pride. And then the people don't show up, and now you post it on Facebook, talk about some, I don't understand. So you can't win a congregation through gimmicks. Have y'all noticed that we do things the hard way here? Look around you. You do things the hard way, but you're sound. You know what you need to know. And if this is the only group of people that God gives me from this time until heaven, then I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So you can't win souls with gimmicks. Sure, we'll help with people. Sure, we'll give people money. But God says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So I don't need to broadcast how I'm blessing people all the time. What are you doing? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I want to buy some of that Holy Ghost. I want to be known as a great man or woman of God. But the people call this individual, that person is the great power of God. Not of, is. That means there has been a replacement put on a pedestal, and when that preacher falls because God has judged at the house, has his house and got rid of him, then the people are like, oh, my goodness, we need to find another person. That's how it already happened here in this city. So because you can't win souls with gimmicks, you have to get people. In other words, however you get people is what you have to do to keep them. So if I brought you here with a 12-inch or 20, excuse me, I forgot, it's modern time. <laughs> a 90-inch flat screen TV DVD with DVD. Some of y'all are like, praise the Lord. The men, this is the men. The ladies could care less. They were like, I can't tell the difference between high def and standard def. As long as it come on, I'm happy. 
But the men will be like, man, I'll come to church if you give me a 90-inch scrap flat screen TV. Yeah. That's a real great man of God right there. He, he takes the people's money and he gives it to me. But then, how are you going to pay rent? But then, what about the mother that really does need the money? Or they need to put food on the table, and you could fi- feed five or 15 or 20 families behind the scenes. Jesus, he never did stuff like that. He always did it behind the scenes. He told them, don't tell anybody. And because of that person, because of his humility, the people told everybody. See the backwards nature that people have today? Human activity can be a hindrance to what God is doing. Yes, it could be a it could be a hindrance to what God is doing, and also success in God comes with submission to God. In other words, we have been called to be an anchor in this community and not a sail that changes direction with every wind of pragmatic popularity. Pragmatism means do whatever works, but not what's right. Amen. If I said I was going to give away $2,500 to the person who would bring at least 15 people with them next Sunday with the reputation that I already have, and you know people will come because there's no bootleg stuff going over here, this place will be filled. People will find the church effortlessly. But then what about the next month and the next month and the next month? And then I have a church full of scabs. Scabs are people, are unhealed people who are in the house. They're still wounded, but they're hard on the surface. Acts chapter 22, verse 25. Come on, Al, let's get on out of here. We don't have any Martin Luther the King fans, so I'm trying to be merciful. Acts chapter 8, verse 22 through 25 says, now this is what the preacher said to the other preacher. Now, You do know that when you are saved and filled with the Spirit, you're a preacher too. Yes, you are. (laughs) Acts chapter 8. I love him so much. Father, help me. (laughs) My elder, my only elder. He was the one who made it, though. So y'all can't get on him that much. Especially. (sighs) Especially. Acts chapter 8, verse 22 through 25. (laughs) This is what the preacher said to the other preacher. They said, change your ways. And now. Ask the master to forgive you for trying to use God to make money. Brother, you might have to pay for me because when I was out there in the world, I didn't give a flip about who was in front of me. I will just tell you and hit you too. I'm just being real with you. So that same spirit that I have has now been conformed by God and I have the same spirit within me now. Change your ways and now. Ask the master to forgive you for trying to use God to make money. I can see this is an old habit with you. You reek with money lust. Oh, and Simon, it said, Simon, just pray for me. That word, pray for me, has now turned into a passive-aggressive way of, I'm not going to do what you have told me to do. Pray on it has turned into a passive-aggressive way of me not doing it at all. I'm just going to wait around long enough for you to forget, hopefully. Let me just pray about it. To who? God has spoken. Let the church say amen. What you waiting for? It's a delay? What are you waiting for? For it to cook? I mean, what is it? Is there a bun in the oven? I don't know. What is it? You got to pray on it? I tell young men, you need to marry that girl. Well, let me pray on it. What do you mean you got to pray on it? You don't have to pray on that. You've been with her forever. Finalize it. I can see this is an old habit with you. 
Verse 25, I'm skipping right ahead. So, so it's verse 24. Oh, said Simon, pray for me. Pray to the master that nothing like that will ever happen to me. And with that, the apostles were on their way, continuing to witness and spread the message of God's salvation, preaching in every Samaritan town they had passed through on their return to Jerusalem. So here's the lessons, and we're done. Without this whole particular text, notice this. This will help you. Simon never repented. A person doesn't, who does not want to repent will just say, pray for me. Just pray for me, R. Kelly. Pray for me, yeah. Woo, pray for me. One gospel album, and God has called that man, but he ain't listening. But he'll say, pray for me, yeah. And the bad part about it is that that is a good example that I believe you can relate to. Because for some of you, you hear the anointing, but others of you, you hear sex. Even though he's saying, pray for me. That's how you know the person is double-minded. Living a dual lifestyle. Because you shouldn't hear sex in a spiritual song. Even though the words, if you read them on paper, they look good. Girl, I want you, man, I want you to pray for me. Mm. Go ahead, get down on your knees. <laughs> <laughs> I think I lost everybody with that. Father, thank you for this time. <laughs> so Simon never wanted to repent. The only thing that Simon wanted to escape was just the consequences of his action. He just didn't want to get caught. Preacher, don't tell everybody that I'm fleecing these people and taking all their money. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't put me out there like that. We go way back. You know we all in this together. I wouldn't do you like that. And I know you run the things over there at Divine Truth, but don't do me like that, preacher. Don't do that, man. Don't do that. If you do it, I'm going to send some people to your house. Now, y'all think I'm playing, but that's how we talk to each other. Remember, they were gangsters in the street before they got saved, too. They said that they were saved, that is. You also can't buy what God has already purchased with his blood. It turns my stomach when I see, I'm going to just say it, Peter Popoff on TV saying, I'm going to give you this oil. But what he's building is a list of names so he can ask you for offerings later. And with that information, he shows up in your city, has already done the research, and calls your name out of the crowd. Now you know. Turns my stomach. Makes me sick. Should make you sick too. It will when you know the difference between the two. Some people also have a Stockholm Syndrome relationship with abusive pastors and leaders. Stockholm means that you actually have been in an abusive relationship so long until even though you cry to get out, you stay in because you love your abuser and you don't go anywhere. It's so twisted to the point to where you'll even defend the person that's controlling you. And all my ladies and men who have been in an abusive relationship and can't figure out why they can't get out, say nothing. Wherever there is anger, envy, and strife, there are a multitude of evil spirits. No one can get free in an environment where there's so much demonic activity. The people were getting saved, but they weren't being set free. Not like how they could be with the Holy Spirit. And last but not least, come on, stand to your feet. We're done. Know that there are people who want to get free from their oppressive ministry, but they are scared about what others will think. Pray that God sets them free. And like the apostles, go on spreading the message of salvation. When they saw the crooked preacher in that city doing his thing, he hung with them for a little while, but they knew that he wasn't really with them. 
And so they turned around and said, you know what? You need to repent. Matter of fact, I'm going to preach about you tonight. Because these people need to know about you. There was a false prophet that I saw on TV that was called out by a preacher. This particular individual set up a tent across from his church. And people were coming far and wide to hear a word of the Lord. Healing service tonight at 7 p.m. Miracle service tonight at 7 p.m. There's nothing wrong with healing and miracles because they do happen. But supernatural things happen more frequently than miracles. Miracles is a complete suspension of all the laws of, of, of this world. But supernaturally, that's what God does. And so a person can't conjure up miracles every single night. It's impossible. It doesn't happen like that because it has too much human activity. So this particular tent was across from this one particular pastor's church, and he caught wind of it. Sounds like something I would do. He found out about what was going on, and he went and he sat in one of the services. He introduced himself to the false prophet. The false prophet was like, cool, whatnot. And the false prophet was continuing going on with their particular information, blah, 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 blah. And then the false prophet said, well, there's a pastor that's in this church, and I want to acknowledge him before the people. Come on on up, pastor. She didn't really want to, or he didn't really want to acknowledge this particular person. They just wanted to, sometimes people hook up with other pastors to try to fleece their people. That's it. So the person said, come on up. I want everybody to meet Pastor so-and-so. And so when he gets up there, she, she was like, I can say she because y'all know what I'm talking about. She was like, okay, well, you know, we're just so glad that you're here to support us and things like that and, and so on and so forth. Let's just go ahead and give a word for the people because you know where there's um, unity, there's affirmation. Where there's affirmation, there's legitimacy. So I don't just believe me. Believe the person that's right across the street from me. In the mouth of two or we three witnesses, one thing is established. Okay, so that helps with the church people that kind of feel that there's something not right, but now they got them too. There's people need to help you, people again. So then the preacher gets up <laughs> and says, well, you know, I'm, I just bless God for each one of you. I know that you really have a, a heart and a desire for God, but I just want to let you, each and every one of you know that this is a false prophet. This is a false prophet. This is a false teacher. She's a wolf in sheep's clothing, and she should not be in this particular congregation. You have the spirit of God. If you want to know the spirit of God, you need to know that Jesus died. She was holding on to the microphone, wanted to try to get away from him. But Jesus died and was buried and rose again on the third day, and he sits at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is who you need. Read the scriptures. And she took the mic away from him, and she was never seen of again. That's the type of preacher that you have. I just want you to know that. Father, thank you for this time. We bless you. We keep you. We, we thank you, Lord God. We honor you. We thank you for these, your people, Heavenly Father. Galatians 9, 6 says that we will reap if we do not faint. Let us not get worried during this time of summer where, you know, there's a lot of things going on and activities, and sometimes God is put on the back burn. It's been going on for years. It's no new thing. But Lord God, let us continue to stay strong. Let us continue to learn your word, get into your word, and let's continue to share the gospel with, with people that are out there that may be bound in places that they don't need to be, that they're suffering even though they're in the midst of a congregation. I bind the spirit of witchcraft and cast it out now. In the mighty name of Jesus. I cast out the demonic spirit of oppression and guilt and shame right now in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of, of, of lust for money right now in the name of Jesus. We cast out right now in the name of Jesus. We cast out filthy lucre in the hands of preachers right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that there, this principality that's hovering over this area or this region that will not allow for the people to come to see your presence, to be a witness of your presence. Let it be removed now in the mighty name of Jesus. We're sending our words so they can be healed, Heavenly Father, right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that you strengthen these, your people who are in the midst of your congregation right now to be a witness to others in Jesus' name.